Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I'd like to talk about backend list code generation in version 4. The code gen as a feature is not new in this version. We've had it for quite some time. However, what's new is the actual ability to create your own code generators and plug them directly into backend list. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. From the code generators which you will find in version 4, and they are sitting right behind this code generation icon. So if you click on it, you will see pretty much what I'm seeing right now on my screen. And here you have all the code generators which Backend List comes with. Uh, and in here you can create sample chat or geo browser or generate UI for navigating through your data tables and so on. And uh, you can try it out and see how, th how they work. However, what I'd like to show you is something quite exciting that was not available before. And let, let me demonstrate a, a code generator that I put together as a demo first, and you will see how it works. And then after that, I'll describe what it actually takes to build a custom code generator. So the code generator that I have put together is sitting in the category called utils. Right here, generates schema diagram. And before I actually run it, let me show you what my data tables uh, look like. So here, clicking on data, you see that there are three, uh, actually four tables, address, person, place of employment, and users. So from the schema perspective, uh, if you click on the schema menu, you will see that the person table has a one-to-one -one relation with address, one-to-many relation with place of employment, and one-to-one -one reference with the system users table. Okay, there, there are no records in these tables, but that's irrelevant because uh, I, wanted, I wanted you to see the schema first. So now going back to code generation, here it is, category utils, and uh, generate schema diagram is my custom code generator. If I click on this, and click the generate button. It creates the zip file, which is uh, automatically downloaded to my computer. But also, in addition to downloading it to my computer, the same zip file is going to be placed in the files section. So here it is, console demo dash generated. I can unzip it right there in a the console. And if I refresh, you'll see that there is a folder that uh, was uh, present in the zip file by navigating in here we get to the generated part. So here it is, index.html. If I click on this file, it opens up and here it is, we get a diagram that shows all the relationships for my schema. And we have here address, person, place of employment, users. So all of this was generated on the fly. Um, I also would like to mention that for this diagramming capability, we uh, used a, a demo version of uh, framework uh, called Go.js by Northwoods Software. So here's a website of Northwoods Software. It is at nwoods.com. You can uh, get this Go.js. They have a fantastic uh, trial and uh, you can see how it works. But going back to this, let me show you how this actually works because this is quite cool. With just a couple of clicks, I got a complete dynamically generated HTML file that contains my database schema. So here it is, I have my uh, code generator sitting in the category utils. Uh, to understand how to develop a code generator and plug it into backend list, take a look at this uh, diagram. So this is a diagram that really models how backend list code generators work. Uh, take a look at this box right here, backend list code generator. And the, every, every single generator would consist of at least two parts. There is a JSON descriptor uh, that is also a, a generator contains XSL script, which, uh, which is XSLT transformation. And there may be some static content that would be referenced by your code generator. So all these JSON descriptors they dictate to console what the code generators are. So remember, when we navigated to the code generation screen, we saw a bunch of different boxes. Each is a code generator. Those code generator boxes, specifically these guys right here, every single one of them gets their information, icon, description, and so on from that JSON descriptor. So once you select a code generator, 
and select click on that generate button a request goes to the backend of the server from console and the code engine puts together an xml document so this guy it really is an xml document that is fed into that xsl script and then the xsl script does all its work and gives you the code generation result so this is sort of like the uh, sequence, I would say, pseudo sequence diagram that uh, illustrates how backendless code generation works. So going back to my code generator that is in the utils category, let me show you what this guy consists of and how I set it all up. So right here in the files section, this is where all the code generators are. If you go into the code gen folder and then go into features, uh, and then generators, here is a bunch of JSON files. And then schema diagram is the one that I put together and take a look at it. So here we have category and it's just an arbitrary name. In fact, changing it to something else, uh, you can call it utilities, then that uh, uh, category will be changed to utilities. In fact, let me show you that right now, utilities, right? So if we then do save and close, and I'll do it in a second, then uh, the category will change to utilities. So you give it a name, a uh, tooltip, the icon, which is just a, uh, an image file that will be rendered, and the path to your XSL script. And that XSL script, uh, if we were to take a look at the diagram, it's going to be this guy. So your JSON descriptor just shows uh, or provides a path where that XSL script is located. So here, uh, let me save and close. And remember, we changed the category to utilities. If I go to code generation and uh, right here, we see that there is now utilities. So this is all very dynamic, all real time. You make a change in the JSON descriptor, you will see that change right away in console. Now, uh, under code gen features XSLs, I do have this XSL file, and this is where all the logic for creating my HTML file, which will essentially render the diagram, all this logic is sitting right here in the XSL. Okay, and uh, by opening it in the editor, there's a bunch of code here and mostly just uh, JavaScript, but the actual inspection of the data tables and creating them is sitting right here. So you would need to uh, understand XSLT. Uh, how it works, and uh, but if you do, it will be very, very straightforward to write something similar. But after all, all the code generators which we provide are actually available right here. So if you want to model your code generator based on something that Backhandles already does, you can actually just make a copy of these of these XSLT files and uh, use them as the foundation for whatever you are going to do. But um, it is actually quite straightforward. So for, for this little project where I needed to visualize my database scheme, it took me about an hour or so to put this together. And it's, it's a quite an exciting process because you can try it out and see the results right away. So there you have it, uh, backendless code generation, very, very cool uh, feature. And uh, hopefully we, this will help you to build some very, very awesome code generators. What's coming next? in the future of 4.x is any code generators that you build, we will provide a way for you to publish them into Backendless Marketplace. And that is super exciting because you can develop something and you can share it with the community. You will be able to publish it in the marketplace for a fee if you'd like and start generating revenue with Backendless. So stay tuned for more videos and hopefully this one gives you a good idea of how Backendless code generation works. Thanks guys. Happy coding.